Ah, the mosquito, a tiny creature capable of causing immense irritation. Their high-pitched whine, a harbinger of sleepless nights. Their bites, itchy reminders of an unwelcome encounter. But mosquitoes are more than just a nuisance. They are efficient vectors of disease capable of spreading illnesses like malaria, dengue fever, and Zika virus. While we may curse their existence, mosquitoes are fascinating creatures. Their life cycle, their ability to locate and feed on blood, their resilience, understanding these aspects, is key to effectively controlling their populations. This exploration delves into the world of mosquitoes, separating fact from fiction and providing insights into effective repellent strategies. From the swamps of the tropics to the backyards of suburbia, mosquitoes have adapted to various environments. Their ability to thrive in diverse conditions makes them a persistent global challenge. Understanding their biology behavior and the diseases they carry is the first step towards minimizing their impact on human health. As we unravel the secrets of these tiny vampires, we'll learn about the science behind repellents, the myths surrounding mosquito control, and the importance of community-based approaches. So let's delve into the world of mosquitoes and equip ourselves with the knowledge to fight back. The mosquito's bite, a seemingly simple act, is a marvel of biological engineering. It's not just a needle prick but a sophisticated process involving specialized mouthparts designed for piercing skin and extracting blood. The female mosquito, the only one that bites, uses her proboscis, a straw-like structure, to penetrate the skin. Once the proboscis reaches a blood vessel, the mosquito injects saliva containing anticoagulants to prevent the blood from clotting. This saliva is what triggers our immune response leading to the characteristic itching and swelling. But the bite's significance goes beyond the immediate discomfort. Mosquito saliva can carry pathogens, microscopic organisms that cause diseases. When a mosquito carrying a pathogen bites a person, it injects these disease-causing agents into the bloodstream. This is how diseases like malaria, dengue, and Zika are transmitted. The severity of mosquito-borne illnesses varies greatly, ranging from mild flu-like symptoms to severe neurological complications and even death. Understanding the role of mosquitoes in disease transmission underscores the importance of effective control measures. Mosquitoes undergo a fascinating life cycle, transforming from aquatic larvae to winged adults. Their journey begins in water where females lay their eggs. These eggs can hatch within days depending on the species and environmental conditions. From the eggs emerge larvae, commonly known as wigglers. Wigglers thrive in stagnant water, feeding on organic matter. They breathe through tubes that extend above the water's surface. After several molts, the wigglers transform into pupae, a comma-shaped stage that doesn't feed but continues to breathe air. Inside the pupa, a remarkable transformation takes place. The larval tissues reorganize and the adult mosquito develops. Finally, the adult mosquito emerges from the pupal casing, ready to fly, mate, and, in the case of females, seek a blood meal to nourish their eggs. Understanding this life cycle is crucial for targeting mosquito control efforts. Mosquitoes are highly attuned to certain cues that guide them towards their blood meals. Carbon dioxide, exhaled by humans and animals, acts as a beacon, drawing mosquitoes from a distance. Body heat is another attractant, helping mosquitoes locate warm-blooded hosts. Lactic acid produced by our muscles is also known to attract mosquitoes. This explains why people who have been exercising are often more prone to mosquito bites. Certain scents, particularly floral fragrances and perfumes, can inadvertently make us more attractive to mosquitoes. Interestingly, some people seem to be more appealing to mosquitoes than others. This could be due to individual differences in body chemistry, genetics, or a combination of factors. Understanding what attracts mosquitoes can help us minimize our attractiveness and reduce the risk of bites. Section 5. Myth-Busting Mosquitoes and Garlic One persistent myth about mosquito control is that consuming garlic can repel these pesky insects. While garlic adds flavor to our meals, there's no scientific evidence to support its effectiveness as a mosquito repellent. The myth likely stems from garlic's strong odor, which some believe might deter mosquitoes. However, studies have shown that consuming garlic does not significantly affect mosquito attraction. Mosquitoes are guided by specific cues like carbon dioxide, body heat, and lactic acid, and garlic consumption doesn't alter these factors. While garlic might offer various health benefits, relying on it to ward off mosquitoes is futile. It's essential to rely on scientifically proven methods for effective mosquito control. 
always choose repellents with active ingredients that have been tested and proven to work. Section 6. Repelling the Enemy, DEET and Other Repellents When it comes to repelling mosquitoes, DEET stands as the gold standard. Developed by the U.S. Army, DEET or NN diethyl metatoluamide has been a trusted mosquito repellent for decades. It works by confusing mosquitoes, disrupting their ability to locate us. DEET products come in various concentrations offering different levels of protection. Higher concentrations provide longer-lasting protection but may feel stickier on the skin. Lower concentrations are suitable for shorter durations and are often preferred for children. Besides DEET, other effective repellents include picaridin IR3535 and oil of lemon eucalyptus. These repellents offer varying degrees of protection and have their own advantages and disadvantages. Always follow product instructions carefully and consult a healthcare professional if you have any concerns about using repellents. Section 7. Natural Defenses Plants That Ward Off Mosquitoes Nature provides us with a diverse array of plants that possess mosquito-repelling properties. Citronella, a fragrant grass, is a well-known natural repellent. Its oil is used in candles, torches and sprays, releasing a scent that mosquitoes find unpleasant. Lemongrass, a close relative of citronella, also contains oils that repel mosquitoes. Catnip, a member of the mint family, is highly effective at warding off mosquitoes. Studies have shown that nepetalactone, a compound found in catnip, is more potent than DEET at repelling certain mosquito species. Other plants with mosquito-repelling properties include lavender, rosemary, basil, and peppermint. While natural repellents can be effective, their protection may not be as long-lasting as synthetic repellents like DEET. It's often necessary to reapply natural repellents more frequently to maintain their effectiveness. Section 8. Environmental Control, Eliminating Breeding Grounds One of the most effective ways to control mosquito populations is to eliminate their breeding grounds. Mosquitoes require stagnant water to lay their eggs, so removing standing water sources around our homes is crucial. Emptying containers that collect rainwater such as buckets, tires, and flower pots denies mosquitoes the opportunity to breed. Maintaining swimming pools and outdoor ponds properly prevents them from becoming mosquito havens. Chlorination and regular cleaning disrupt the mosquito life cycle, preventing larvae from developing into adults. Clearing gutters of debris allows water to flow freely, reducing the chances of mosquito breeding. By modifying our environment to discourage mosquito breeding, we can significantly reduce their numbers and minimize the risk of mosquito-borne illnesses. Section 9. Community Efforts – A Joint Fight Against Mosquitoes Mosquito control is not solely an individual responsibility. It requires collective action at the community level. Community-based mosquito control programs play a vital role in reducing mosquito populations and protecting public health. These programs often involve larviciding, treating stagnant water sources with insecticides to kill mosquito larvae. Another common practice is adulticiding, spraying insecticides to kill adult mosquitoes. Adulticiding is typically conducted during outbreaks or when mosquito populations pose a significant threat. Community education campaigns raise awareness about mosquito-borne illnesses, promote personal protection measures, and encourage residents to participate in mosquito control efforts. By working together, communities can create an environment that is less hospitable to mosquitoes. Section 10. Protecting Yourself. Tips for Avoiding Mosquito Bites. While mosquito control efforts aim to reduce overall mosquito populations, personal protection measures are essential for minimizing individual risk. Wearing long-sleeved shirts and long pants provides a physical barrier against mosquito bites, especially during peak mosquito activity hours. Using mosquito nets over beds, particularly in areas with high mosquito densities, prevents mosquitoes from reaching us while we sleep. Applying mosquito repellent to exposed skin creates a chemical barrier that deters mosquitoes from biting. Avoiding areas with high mosquito activity such as swamps, marshes, and dense vegetation reduces the chances of encountering these insects. By adopting these simple precautions, we can significantly reduce our risk of mosquito bites and the diseases they carry. Section 11 Conclusion Coexisting with Mosquitoes Mosquitoes, despite their annoying bites and disease-carrying potential, are an integral part of the ecosystem. They serve as food sources for birds, bats, and other animals, and their larvae play a role in aquatic food webs. 
Eradicating mosquitoes entirely is neither feasible nor desirable. Our goal should be to manage their populations effectively, minimizing their impact on human health while maintaining ecological balance. Understanding mosquito biology, debunking myths, and employing proven control methods are crucial for achieving this balance. Individual actions, combined with community efforts, can create a safer and less mosquito-ridden environment. By adopting responsible practices, we can coexist with mosquitoes, minimizing their nuisance and protecting ourselves from the diseases they transmit.